We're coming down from a solar storm media frenzy that made headlines all around the world. And then the solar storm, it fizzled. Were you one of the lucky ones who caught the aurora? Those stories are more in the news this week. Space weather this week is calming down, but it all started with fast-growing region 2736 that fired off an Earth-directed solar storm, and man was this one hard to predict. Of course, it made headlines around the world and was hyped to oblivion. Everybody was waiting for Aurora, and of course, what happened? It arrived late, very late, like a day and a half fashionably late. Of course, it must have encountered some heavy traffic on the way to Earth because when it finally did arrive, it was tired and weak. And it did manage to cause some aurora, not nearly like what we had hoped, but it did make it down to mid-latitudes for a short while. But you had to be pretty savvy to catch it. Meanwhile, we do have another chance for some more aurora as this coronal hole rotates into the Earth strike zone, and that could bump us up to active conditions for a short little bit here, right around the 28th into the 29th. So we'll see if that manages to make up for this kind of solar storm fizzle that we just had. Meanwhile, region 2736 that had boosted the solar flux up into the marginal range for radio propagation, well, that region has now transited to the sun's backside, and we won't see it for easily another two weeks. So it looks like radio propagation is going to tank back down to poor conditions. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see back on the 20th is when region 2736 then merged on the Earth-facing sun and whoosh, look at that X-ray flux jump way up like that. And by proxy, the solar flux also jumped really quickly. And suddenly we found ourselves with marginal radio propagation again on Earth's day side. We even had some solar radio noise with all these little C-class flares, pop, 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 pop. You can see them there. One of them launched that Earth-directed solar storm. And we enjoyed these conditions until about the 26th when that region began to rotate to the sun's backside, and you can see that X-ray flux just dive vroom, back down as it rotated behind the sun's west limb. Now, we're going to be watching this region on the sun's backside as soon as we can. Right now, it's kind of in a blackout mode. We can't see anything because we don't have an instrument there. But I guarantee you that thing is still pretty active. So we'll be noticing and waiting to see what it's going to do on the sun's backside because in about two weeks, it could rotate back into view and cause more havoc. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually reached storm levels was back on the 17th due to a small pocket of fast solar wind that did manage to bring us just a little bit of aurora. But since then, things quieted down and quieted down and got really quiet. We were kind of on pins and needles for a little while waiting for this big G2 solar storm to arrive. And then when it finally did on the 26th and 27th, uh, can you even see it in this mess here? Well, I hate to say it, but this is the state of the art when it comes to space weather forecasting. We can watch these eruptions launch off the sun, but if we don't know how much traffic they're going to be hitting on their way to Earth, then we don't know how late they're going to arrive. And if we don't know their orientation, they may be a solar storm fizzle. And that's exactly what happened here. So it's so important if you're going to be an aurora chaser to monitor your real-time space weather information. And this solar storm got more media attention and hype than a solar storm has gotten in at least a year or more that I've seen. But if you were an aurora photographer and you didn't manage to catch the aurora, never fear, there are always chances to get them. But if you were a dedicated field reporter and you actually kept up with the real-time space weather info, you actually did catch some aurora. And I'm going to show you some of these pictures here. And it did actually make it down to mid-latitudes briefly. That's what's really cool about even this solar storm fizzle. You can catch aurora if you know when and where to look. So let's see some beautiful pictures at Norway. And there were some in Finland. Aurora was seen in Scotland. And all over Iceland. And as we go across the pond, it was seen in Canada. Here's some in Yellowknife. And it was seen in Manitoba. It was also seen in Saskatchewan. And believe it or not, it actually dropped into the United States. We had a couple dedicated field reporters in Michigan, and they caught it. Not bad. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase, with the moon being only about 20% illuminated by the 31st. So you night sky watchers, now's a good time to start looking for those dim objects in the sky.
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the sun, well, pretty much from the side anymore. And as we look at Stereo A's view, well, there's just not a lot going on right now. So what this means is that as this coronal hole on the Earth-facing disk rotates through the Earth strike zone and we get a chance for some aurora, well, after that, things are going to start becoming pretty quiet, easily for the next week or maybe even a little bit longer. It also means that poor radio propagation that we now have on the Earth-facing disk is going to continue because we don't really see any bright regions in Stereo's view yet. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating through the Earth's strike zone over the next couple days. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 55% chance of a major storm. And this should last easily through the weekend, possibly lingering into the beginning of April. Now, at mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 15% chance of a a minor storm, but this should not last very long at mid latitudes. So, your aurora photographers, if you were left out in the cold with this solar storm hype and didn't get a chance to see aurora, here's another chance for you, but you're going to have to stay on your toes. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are back to a spotless sun, which means we are in the green once again for big solar flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts right now, which means you GPS users on Earth's day side should be very happy. But it does also mean that the solar flux has tanked once again. We're back into the high 60s for solar flux, which means poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. And unfortunately, it looks like like these conditions are going to continue easily over the next week. Now, also because we are near solar minimum, we do have a higher uh, cosmic ray penetration than we normally would have. So all you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are at the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include you prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely calming down. Now we do have a chance for another solar storm, hopefully without all the media hype this time. So if you aurora photographers were left out in the cold from this recent solar storm fizzle, you do have another chance at aurora, although it'll be a bit fleeting. It could come down to mid latitude, so you're going to need to monitor the real-time space weather information and follow the field reporters out there who are catching aurora, and that could help you spot it. Now, as far as your amateur radio and shortwave radio and emergency responders, well, things aren't looking so great for you right now. We're back to a spotless sun, and that means the solar flux is tanked. We're back to poor radio propagation on Earth's day side, and unfortunately, it looks like these trends are going to continue easily over the next week, possibly two weeks before things get a little better. But if you're a GPS user, well, you know, this upcoming solar storm shouldn't be that big a deal. So with that and a spotless sun, your GPS reception should look pretty good as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora on Earth's night side. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.